Good evening. It's June seventh, two 2013. My name is Matthew Ogden, and I'd like to welcome all of you viewing a live webcast with Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. This is part of our weekly series, which occurs at 8 p.m. Eastern Time every Friday on LaRouchePack.com. Tonight, joining me in the studio will be Leandra Bernstein and Dennis Mason, both editors with LPAC TV, to pose some questions to Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. Uh, but before I introduce them, I would like to give Mr. LaRouche the podium. So without further ado, I give you Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. All right, I have a report which is given to me by people known to me on what the Obama administration is doing. And the report indicates three subjects that the administration has been conducting spying uh, against uh, all kinds of people, and that this is actually threatening uh, to bring about an ouster of Obama from the administration and uh, oppo uh, by groups opposing his uh, re-election. Now, the second thing we have is that this, this comes on top of the new attacks from Obama on all kinds of people. And uh, the, it's something where the executive branch cannot handle it. It's a, a threat of a real coup d'etat, which is, not only exists, but exists in action already. The President of the United States is attempting to pull a coup d'etat, that is a takeover, a seizure of power, to become an absolute dictator. And what has happened, as many of you may know already, is that this week there has been a revolt in the Senate and other parts of the system which want this guy out. If you look carefully, however, it, there's a deeper aspect to this thing. The overall operation, of which Obama, Obama's a part, but he's only a part, we shouldn't exaggerate his importance in the, in the structure. He's significant, yes, he represents this, he represents that, but that's not what the issue is. The issue is that he has been allowed to go to the point that he has absolute, total dictatorship over almost everybody. And what happened this week, of course, is the, uh, the parliament, or the, 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 the uh, pardon me, I was thinking of the British parliament, but the uh, in Congress has ro risen in revolt. And the pattern it in is that this spying operation that Obama's been running on behalf of the Queen of England has brought them to the point that people are now on that account and several other related accounts which have been piling up are ready to throw this bum out of the presidency. And that's where we stand now. We're on the edge. Is Obama going to succeed in making himself an absolute dictator over the United States? No, he's not going to succeed because the, the British Queen is the one who's occupying the position. He's just a dummy. But the threat is that if he succeeds on her behalf and what he's put through, then there will be an absolute dictatorship in the United States, which will probably lead to a revolt, which means all kinds of bloodshed. So the best thing to do now is to get rid of this guy while he's highly unpopular. Well, let me uh, introduce Leandra Bernstein, who will present a question uh, which Mr. LaRouche just referred to from institutional circles inside Washington and additionally some of the necessary background that needs to be uh, known, taken into account. Excuse me. Thank you very much, Matt. Now, as, as background, I think most people have been well aware of the Washington Post coverage and the coverage from uh, the London Guardian on the NSA collecting the phone records of millions of Verizon customers daily. Now, this story came out on Wednesday of this week, and it's been followed up 
uh, every day, hour to hour, by new revelations. And the original report stated that the NSA had is is currently collecting uh, the telephone records of millions of U.S. customers for Verizon, uh, and that uh, and that there was a copy of the order given to conduct this kind of uh, this kind of dragnet was obtained by the Guardian as a leak on this on this program and it was stated in the original report that uh, f the FISA court uh, granted the order to the FBI giving the government unlimited authority to obtain the data uh, for a specified period uh, on people on calls both within the United States and between the U.S. and other countries. Now, there was an immediate uh, response, or there was a response to this from the, uh, the head of the DNI, James Clapper, and he said that the two articles containing this leaked information had uh, numerous, numerous inaccuracies, namely uh, that that we weren't spying on on American calls. We weren't spying on just domestic calls. That's that's not what's in the law. It was only foreign calls. So only if you were making a call outside of the country. And he concluded in a press release by saying the unauthorized disclosure of information about this important and entirely legal program is reprehensible and risks important protections for the security of Americans. Now, uh, today, uh, Glenn Greenwald, who writes for The Guardian and was the original author of this of this uh report on the, the leaked information, made the point that as far as the government is concerned, the government is comprised of public servants. As public servants, we're supposed to know virtually everything about what they do. That's why we call them public servants. They are supposed to know virtually nothing about what we do. That's what makes us private citizens. So I thought that was an interesting case, and you have you have really a, a incredible dragnet. Each of these each of these uh, providers have had uh, in a different program. This is I'm sorry, this is not the the Verizon program. But what was leaked further was a was a data mining project uh, that includes nine of the largest internet servers uh, that have had their, uh, their, these providers have essentially uh, provided the NSA with current and past data on, as far as we can tell, anyone, any of their, any of their users. Now, when this came up in uh, in the Congress, this this came up in the Congress during just a routine uh, routine Senate appropriations uh, hearing, at, which included uh, Eric Holder, where Eric Holder was put put in the hot seat, and uh, Senator Senator Kirk asked Eric Holder. Uh, I just want to talk about the Verizon scandal. He says, I want to ask, could you assure us that no phones inside the Capitol were monitored of members of Congress that would give a future executive branch, if they started pulling this kind of thing up, that would give them unique leverage over the legislature? And in response to this question, Eric Holder started, I mean, his mouth started moving. And he said, oh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer this question, but in a closed hearing. To which Senator Kirk replied, I'd interrupt you and say the correct answer would be to say, no. We stayed within our lane, and I'm assuring you we did not spy on members of Congress. Of course, that's not the answer that Eric Holder gave. So, uh... Just further uh, in this in the coverage from uh, Glenn Greenwald, 
you had you have the identification of what he termed uh, new domestic authoritarianism, and as many people know, this week uh, is on June sixth. It was the sixty ninth anniversary of D Day, and in this in this article, Greenwald writes. Few Americans believe that they live in a police state. Indeed, many would be outraged at the suggestion. Yet the everyday fact that the police have the right to monitor the communications of all its citizens in secret is a classic hallmark of a state that fears freedom as well as championing it. Ironically, The Guardian's revelations were published 69 years to the day since U.S. and British soldiers launched the D-Day invasion of Europe. The young Americans who fought their way up the Normandy beaches rightly believed they were helping free the world from a tyranny. They did not think that they were making it safe for their own rulers to take such sweeping powers as these over their descendants. So with that as background, I'd like to get to the question that came in from uh, an institutional source. The source asked Mr. LaRouche, the most recent revelation about the Obama administration gathering personal data on hundreds of millions of Americans without any due process comes at a most damaging moment. The scandals that preceded these latest news accounts have already shown that the administration has been spying on journalists and the IRS has been targeting political groups opposing President Obama's re-election. The pattern is one of denial of due process. On the one hand, in a recent speech on the drone kill program, President Obama claimed that the U.S. is now safer than at any time since the original 9-11 attack. Yet today, in defending himself over the mass spying scandal, he argued that the threat of terrorism warrants the extraordinary spying on all Americans. Can the President have it both ways? What recourse do the American people have? What should Congress do? So far, Congress has shown little appetite or competence in dealing with the pileup of executive branch scandals. We're still awaiting much information about Fast and Furious. So what is your assessment of this process? Well, it's not good for Obama. Obama has gone, shall we say, too far. And the accumulation of what he's been doing in intentional crimes against our citizens and against our system. He says, I can run everything. Trust me. Don't interfere with what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. And what this is done already. It's all at the streets and around the streets of the world already. Obama is on the edge of being thrown out of office. That's exactly what we're picking up. He's ready to be thrown out of office. Whether that charming event will occur or not has not been decided. But if you, if you take the proceedings that occurred in the Senate in the answer to these, this colloquy, that colloquy already indicates that despite a few dissidents who still are covering up for Obama, the majority of the Senate is for a house cleaning. Now, the time has come that the law lawful process that dealt with a, a president earlier and threw him out of office back in the early 1970s, the same treatment with a, probably an extra kick or two is coming to Obama. 